Javier looked at Kate excitedly. Really? He got up and started dressing. We should go to the Pink Star, he announced. I've heard it's nice. The Pink Star? Kate asked. Isn't that for incredibly rich people? Surely you don't think I can afford to put you up there. I saw something about Madison's and Ian's divorce on the news, he said. Since she's no longer the top priority, I'm sure the family can help you. Let's at least go look. He reached out and wrapped his arms around her waist before pulling her out the door. Ian is a very generous man, he said. I'm sure that he made sure Madison was taken care of. After thinking about it, Kate realized that Javier might be right. Ian loved Madison very much after all. He had to have made sure she and the Greenwalds had somewhere nice to stay for a while. She also knew that the rest of the Weston family didn't want the divorce to get a lot of public attention. It would be best if the family members were hidden out of sight somewhere nice. Javier, she said suddenly, I saw a suit at the mall that I think would look very nice on you. Why don't we go take a look at it? I'm sure you'd look incredibly handsome. He smiled and reached out to caress the side of her face. She couldn't help but smile at him. He was so playful and handsome that she wanted to give him everything to keep him with her. She would gladly give him all her money, cars, a house, or anything else he wanted if it was hers to give. They laughed and talked as they walked hand in hand to the Palace Arcade shopping mall. He mercilessly teased her by reaching out to pinch her waist or tickle her the whole way. People stopped to admire the happy couple as they walked past. When they got to the mall, though, Javier's happy mood evaporated. He didn't like any of the clothes that Kate picked out for him, and he glared at her angrily. These are the clothes you wanted me to wear? He hissed at her after pulling her behind a clothes rack. Please don't be angry, Javier. She hurried to soothe him. If you don't like them, we'll find something else that you do, all right? Let's go look at another store. He shook his hands off and stepped away. Don't think that I can't tell what you're thinking, he snarled. You see me as a charity case because of the problems my family is having. It's not your place to rub my nose in it and insult me like this. He turned around to leave, completely ignoring Kate's distress. She took a few steps after him and grabbed his sleeve to pull him around and stood up to kiss him. Please don't be like this, she said sweetly. I didn't do it on purpose. You know me in that I never had anything nice before the Greenwald family took me in. I didn't know what type of clothes you like to wear, please forgive me. He frowned at the desperate girl in front of him. She was pretty enough, but other than that he didn't like her. She wasn't smart, but it didn't matter. He kind of needed her, and could use his naivete to his advantage. When we were younger, he said, my family was really powerful. I used to be the heir to a vast fortune, but you would never know it now. You said that you wanted to be with me anyway, so I came here. If you can't act right, perhaps it's best if I leave. I'm so sorry, Kate hurried to say as she reached for him. It won't happen again. I didn't mean to get it so wrong. I won't make the same mistake again, I promise. You can have whatever you like or do whatever you want. I don't care, as long as you don't leave me. He was her first love, and it was too hard for her to just let him go. It didn't even matter that he looked at her with such anger, almost hatred even, at times. She loved him beyond reason. Javier, she pleaded, just wait until I have the Greenwald family's money. We can build our own life together, and never have to deal with such injustices again. Please, just a little while longer. How long am I supposed to wait? He asked after lifting her chin to look her in the eyes. I've been here for six months acting like a ridiculous pretty boy. And you want me to wait longer? She thought about all the sacrifices he had made for her and was touched. She couldn't believe that anyone would go to such great lengths for her. He certainly deserved to be treated well. Just trust me for a little while longer, she said anxiously. Since Madison got divorced... She must have gotten a lot of money in the settlement and other valuables. I'll go see what I can take so that no one will notice. Then, we can wait for a while before we make the family buy our silence. Nothing will stop us after that. This improved Javier's mood a little bit. 
He walked to another store and began to look at men's clothes. At the register, he used Kate's card to pay for it without any second thoughts. He loved that she was such a fool for him. Zach, John, Stella, and Madison left the furniture store and headed to the mall after picking out the furniture for Madison's new house. They looked like the perfect family and even made some people watching jealous of how close they were. Let's go eat at the Griffin later, Madison said. I just love their chicken dish. She was in such a great mood after seeing Ian that it was hard for her to remember to act a bit sad. Then, she continued, I can go pack my things up at the house since we'll be so close. Pack your things? Stella asked. You've only just come back home. Stella and John couldn't help but be a little sad that Madison was planning to move out of the house so quickly after they had just got her back. They had enjoyed her living with them. Zach was still in the house, but Kelsey was gone. Even Kate was around less and less. Why are you in such a rush to move out? John asked, irritated. I thought that things were going well. Although Madison appreciated their feelings and wanted, she thought about Ian and wanted to be closer to him at the villa. If I just live in the house with you, she said, people will talk more about my divorce than if I get a place of my own. What's wrong with a daughter moving back in with her parents for a while? John asked unhappily. Stella didn't say anything. She just stopped walking and looked at Madison carefully. She wants to be alone in that big house while she's pregnant. Something seems off about that, Stella thought. Isn't it better if you stay home while you're pregnant? Zach asked quietly. Think about the child. What if something happens and you're all alone? Madison didn't know how to answer that. It was a valid concern, but she knew that she couldn't let anyone know about the secret passageway to Ian. If anyone learned of it, it would be a big issue. I have to tell them something to make them feel better about being on my own, she realized. Before she could decide what to do, John let out a ferocious roar. Get back! Don't you have any shame? Madison and Zack rushed to see what had made John so angry and were shocked by what they saw. Kate was leaning against a man in the entryway to a men's clothing store. She glared at John and Stella while Javier looked at them indifferently. He turned his focus to Madison and Zack when they got closer. After studying her for a moment, he grinned wickedly at Madison. She knew exactly what he was thinking, and was furious with him while also feeling a bit nauseous. I'm Javier, he said casually as he stretched out his hand toward John. Kate's boyfriend, he told. The way that Javier introduced himself to the family made Kate love him even more. She was infatuated with him. The slight blush she got around him made her look even more attractive. Dad, Mom, she said, why are you here? If I'd known you'd be here, Javier and I would have prepared better to meet you. This isn't how I wanted to introduce you. Madison raised her eyebrows questioningly as she looked at Javier. She knew that someone like him was just a predator looking to cheat Kate out of whatever money he could get. His choice of Kate seemed very strange to her, since Kate didn't have a lot of money. If anyone in the family was wealthy, it was Zack. Are you here to shop? Javier said slyly as he stared back at Madison. How about we go with you? I've heard that the Griffin has excellent food, he continued. Why don't we go there and get to know each other over a meal? Madison guessed that he wouldn't be the one to pay, and Zack didn't say anything. He just looked between Javier and Madison as his anger grew. But they were in public, so he didn't feel like it was the right time to address the situation. John also wasn't fooled. He'd met a lot of different types of people in life and he realized what kind of man Javier was right away. Madison, Javier said after a moment of awkward silence, I've heard that you're on good terms with the Weston family. Hopefully, you can get us in without reservation. My friends have told me about the perfect spot in the restaurant. Maybe we can get that table. How about you call them and set it up? It was all Madison could do not to laugh at this fool. Ian never ordered her around like that. John just glared at Javier, and Zack remained silent while staring at Kate. He wanted to know what she could find attractive about this man, 
She'd never had the best luck in love when he thought about it. Why are you so petty? Javier said when Madison didn't rush to make the phone call. It's just a meal. People who don't know any better might think that Kate and I were bullying you. You should be honored that we're making the time to eat with you, he added. Madison couldn't help it anymore. She laughed. Then she noticed how angry John was becoming and went to his side to help him calm down. Dad, she said gently, we're all quite hungry. We should go eat. Having called the griffin, she kept a tight hold on John's arm as they walked away, completely ignoring Kate. What is this? Kate complained. No wonder people say that our family has problems. You're just going to walk away from me like I mean nothing to you? Javier motioned for her to be quiet and pulled her along behind the family. They followed them to the restaurant, even knowing that they weren't welcome. Madison, John, Stella, and Zach rode in silence for a long time. Madison, Stella finally broke the silence. Is it appropriate for us to continue going to the Griffin? John coughed from the front seat to cut her off and looked at her meaningfully. Stella was worried, though. Would they still be welcome there? What if everyone whispers about Madison? Does she want to hear what everyone's saying about her divorce? She thought anxiously. Don't worry about it, Madison assured them. Even though Ian and I are divorced... It doesn't mean that our families can't be civil to one another. After all, I'm carrying Ian's child, right? We're just going to have a meal in a restaurant that we all like. You guys saw how dishonorably Javier acted. It's probably best that we go somewhere familiar where people will be watching. They would never truly welcome someone like Javier into the Greenwald family. Even though John, Zach, and Stella had plenty to say, Madison felt like everyone would behave themselves at the Griffin. It wasn't the worst place for them to be. When they reached the restaurant, Mr. Williams rushed out to meet them. Madison was, after all, a very distinguished guest, whether she was with Ian or not. Mr. Greenwald, he eagerly greeted Zach as John and Stella got out of the car. Madison, he said concerned, why are you here? What if something goes wrong? The staff couldn't help but stop and stare when they saw that Madison was there. They didn't know everything that had happened, but they had heard about the divorce and that she was carrying Ian's child. He told them to feed her only the best food if she showed up at the restaurant. Just as Mr. Williams was sending off the staff with instructions to prepare a table for the group, Javier and Kate walked up to join them. Madison walked behind Mr. Williams as if she didn't know the two uninvited guests, which made Kate furious. Why are you pretending that you don't even know me? She yelled. Don't forget what's happened between us and what you've cost me. Shh, let's just have a good dinner, shall we? Javier said as he pulled Kate to his side. He looked right at Madison as he said, She's not ignoring us. We just got here and everyone is heading to the table. This isn't the place to cause a scene. Javier smiled as if nothing happened and pulled Kate along to follow the rest of the family to a table. John was especially annoyed. The usually busy restaurant was packed. There were lots of people already seated and others waiting for tables. Madison didn't want to make a scene, so she eagerly followed Mr. Williams to the private room in the back. Javier's eyes lit up with excitement as he studied the elaborate setting. He would love to own a place like this one day, especially if he convinced some woman like Kate to buy it for him. He wasn't fooling anyone, though. Even Mr. Williams had instantly determined what kind of person he was. When the food was placed in front of them, John leaned closer to Madison. You start eating, he whispered. I'm going to talk to them. Madison was starving and quickly began eating her food. She seemed to be especially hungry and was still in a great mood despite the strange intruder at the table with them. Zach just picked at his food as he listened to John's conversation with Kate and Javier. How long have you been dating, Kate? He asked. Where are you from? What do your parents do? John had never really liked Kate and her actions since she had returned. Nonetheless, although he didn't show her affection often, it didn't mean that he didn't care about her happiness and whom she was spending time with. What do you do for a living? He continued asking questions. Can you make my daughter happy? Dad, Kate said angrily. Why are you being so rude? Stop asking so many questions. Why is Madison already eating? Are you going to talk to us until our food gets cold? 
You should be kinder to Javier. After all, this is his first time meeting you. Stella looked at Kate closely, but she didn't say anything. Ever since Kelsey had died, Kate had become quite the problem for the family. Seeing Kate with someone who didn't treat her well made Stella sad. I'm not even talking to you, John shouted at her as he slammed his fist down on the table. You hold your tongue. His outrage even made Javier jump. John was furious and no one dared to say anything. Even Madison looked down at her plate instead of watching him talk to Javier. Mr. Williams came in and helped her move to a different table. She sat quietly eating her food, even though she was incredibly curious about what might happen. She did love John. They had become closer than ever, and her bond with Stella had grown stronger since Kelsey's death. It made them stop and learn to appreciate each other and any time together they might have. Kate, as a member of the Greenwald family, it's time that you learned and followed the rules. John snapped, berating her. The longer he looked at her, the more frustrated he became. First off, don't interrupt me when I'm talking to you, he snarled. Kate looked as if she was about to snap back at him when Javier reached out his hand to stop her and said, I understand your concern, Mr. Greenwald. She's your baby girl and you care about her. She's not as experienced as we are. Kate loved the way that Javier jumped in to defend her, but she had no idea how sad the situation was. Madison had guessed what was going on right away and understood that Javier certainly didn't respect Kate. She was simply a starting point to him that would help him get where he wanted to be. I'm not from here, Javier continued. My family is from Bend. I'm not sure if you know this, but Kate lived there when she was younger. Eventually, her adopted parents moved to Portland. Madison was curious about the story behind their relationship. My family has fallen on hard times, but that didn't matter to Kate. I came here to be with her, and I planned on visiting you in a few days. Who knew that we would run into each other at the mall? He said smoothly. I'm sorry that I didn't make it more of a point to meet you earlier. He seemed like a good guy, but everyone could tell that he had ulterior motives. So, what do you plan to do? John asked impatiently. Do you plan on marrying her? Actually, Kate said excitedly, we do plan on getting married. She hadn't expected it to be so easy to tell him what their plans were, but he had brought it up. Javier didn't say anything, but he did frown instinctually before he could remember to appear happy about it. He thought that no one had seen, but everyone except for Kate had noticed. I would love to marry Kate when the time is right, he said after a moment, but I'm not sure when that might be. Then he addressed Madison directly, saying, I know that Kate is the eldest child in the family, and if we were to get married, I would want to treat her well. I don't have a lot of money to provide for her, though, and I know that the Weston family must have given you something in the divorce. Maybe you don't have enough to share, but look at the differences in our situations. You all look so well off while we're struggling to get by. Other people are talking about it, even. Madison stared at Javier, shocked by his audacity, and sat down her knife and fork. That's right, Kate rushed to agree. Even though you and Ian are divorced, he loves you. He must have made sure you were taken care of. Just look at how quickly the staff rushed to serve you when you arrived. The manager practically fawned over you and has taken care of us himself. Are you the owner of the Griffin or something? Kate wasn't wrong in her guess, but Madison wasn't about to affirm it for her. In her mind, she was just watching over the restaurant until Ian recovered. Is that true? Javier asked excitedly. That'd be great. I heard he owns the Pink Star as well. He must be incredibly wealthy. John almost laughed, but Zack reached out and pulled him back, warning him not to speak. To be honest, Javier said, I got my degree in business management and I'm very good at it. Why don't you let me manage the Griffin for you? You'll need some help with things as the pregnancy goes on. You shouldn't have to worry about anything. John turned red. He had never heard such shameless ramblings. If Stella hadn't reached out and grabbed his hand, he would have slapped him. Madison frowned. She was annoyed with Javier and Kate and had eaten very little of her food. Mr. Williams was standing nearby and had heard everything. He wanted to get the security guards to remove Javier, but he didn't want to cause the Greenwalds any more embarrassment. 
Madison waved her hand to indicate that he could take the rest of her food away. She ordered fresh appetizers for her family, and then turned her attention to Kate and Javier. Kate, is this the person you want to marry? She asked carefully. I'm not going to tell you what you should do, or how a man should treat you. Madison said when Kate didn't answer. If you want to start a family, who's going to provide for the two of you? He has to at least have a job, right? There has to be something that you want for the future, and you need a sense of security in that. Does he have any ambition of his own, or is he going to depend on you? She didn't care about Javier's feelings, or whether Kate was embarrassed. It wasn't her place to provide for them, but she could try to make Kate see some reason. He seems to have no job and no future ahead of him, Madison continued. And why on earth would anyone let someone they've just met manage a business for them? It's pretty presumptuous. You owe me, Kate stood up and yelled at Madison. If it weren't for your mother, I would have been raised in this family. My life would have been completely different. Why did I have to be sent away and spend so many years just wondering where my real family was? You've taken over my home, parents, siblings, and life. It should have been me marrying Ian, but you stole him from me. Thanks to you, I have nothing. <laughs> Madison scoffed. Why do you feel that everyone owes you something? You're not a victim. No one owes you anything. Your adoptive parents gave you a home and a life, and your father searched everywhere for you. He hasn't treated you badly or abandoned you despite your poor choices and behavior. As for me, Madison continued angrily, why would I be the one to owe you anything? I didn't abandon you or take you away. I wasn't the one who caused any of your suffering. Even if you had been in the Greenwald family, Ian would have never married you. So stop blaming everyone else for your mistakes. Madison felt no obligation to provide for Kate or this sleazy guy that she had unfortunately fallen in love with. Everyone was responsible for their own choices. Ask security to come and see them out, please, Madison said to Mr. Williams. Madison! Kate yelled furiously and somewhat desperately. How dare you! Don't you feel the slightest bit of guilt? She shouted. Javier leveled a serious look at Madison, his jaw tight, and Zach stepped in between them. John took a deep breath and told Kate, Stay here. Javier, you can get out now. I'll never agree to you marrying my daughter. Kate looked like she was about to cry, while Javier glared at all of them and wrestled down his anger. With a terrible grin, he said, Your whole family will regret this. He slammed the door on his way out, causing Kate to flinch. She didn't go after him. Dad, how can you be like this? Madison's only your foster child and I'm your actual daughter. So why are you treating me like this? Kate screeched as she broke down, sobbing as if her life was over. What have you got against Javier? Are you being a snob or a racist? Get over yourself. John laughed cruelly. He's a gold digger, nothing more. He pointed at the door Javier had just left through and spoke loudly and spitefully. I don't care about his class or his skin color. I care about the fact that he's using you. If he was a good man and loved you, he wouldn't have wronged you. If he wants to make it up to you, he should be working hard to improve himself. Not just trying to get into your bank account. I won't let you gamble with your happiness like this. I know his sort. Once he has your money, he won't lift a finger for the rest of his life. What's the use of a man like that? His words gave Madison pause. Maybe he's been a good father for once in his life. He's right about money attracting the wrong kind of people, she thought. How would you know? Kate complained. He's good to me. I know him better than you do. So why should you get to decide on his character? Oh, open your eyes, Kate, John shouted, wondering how on earth his daughter could have fallen for such a man. He's a snake, a swindler who specializes in ripping off rich heiresses. He has reasons for getting close to you, Kate, and they aren't your winning personality. Kate spun away from him in disgust, determined to ignore all of his accusations and stormed away. Stella made a move to chase after her, but John's hand on her arm held her back. 
Zach shot his dad a frustrated look and went after Kate. Left with only the anxious parents, Madison quickly excused herself to the washroom. Mr. Williams watched her leave in consternation. He was supposed to be keeping an eye on her, but he was too caught up in things to be able to follow her. What can happen to her between here and the washrooms, he thought. As Madison was on her way back from the washroom, the door of a private room opened beside her, and Javier leaped out and shouldered her into the wall, trapping her. She instinctively cradled her belly. Why is he still here? He said we'd all pay, and now he's cornered me. Well, there are no security guards around, she thought. Her heart was beating very fast, and she pressed her lips together to prevent fear from showing. Why are you here, Javier? He gave a soft laugh and looked down at her, sizing her up. What? You think I don't deserve to be in a place like this? I'm not good enough, is that it? People of my skin color should be wearing waiters' uniforms, right? She frowned. It's got nothing to do with that. It's his personality, she thought. And present circumstances were only proving her instinct that he wasn't a good person. A nice person wouldn't be exuding this aura of threat right now. She lowered her eyes, trying not to provoke him. But what she saw made her heart beat double time. The hilt of a knife was protruding from his belt, and the inside pocket of his sports coat was smeared with white powder. What power do I have to bargain with someone like him? She wondered. Footsteps approached from around the corner, but she didn't dare call out for help. The person was close by, but the knife was a lot closer. Javier gave her an approving nod as she released the breath she had drawn to cry out. Dragging her into the room he had been hiding in, he closed the door behind them. I propose a deal, he said. He pushed her onto an uncomfortable couch by the window and leaned back against the edge of the table. If you sign over the griffin to Kate, then you're free to go. I've got Kate neatly wrapped around my finger already. Trying hard to suppress her fear and disgust, she attempted to sound as though she was considering it. With one comforting hand on her stomach, she replied, Does it have to be the griffin? She couldn't reject him outright for fear of setting him off. But if she didn't bargain at all, then he would smell a rat. Can I offer you something else instead? Javier wasn't a fool like Kate. He was wise to the ways of the world. If Madison had agreed too readily, he would have doubted her. But her attempt at bargaining set him at ease. Maybe she's as dumb as Kate is, he thought. No, it has to be the griffin, he replied with a smirk. Restaurants are some of my favorite places. I can see a bright future, and it's been so easy. Besides, the griffin is a haunt of the rich and powerful, so having an inside line to them will be a great way to collect useful information. And that's worth even more than money, he thought. If you won't give me it, then I can only think of one other thing I'd accept instead. He ran his gaze up and down her body, stripping her with his eyes. Be mine for as long as I want you. I'm sure I'll get tired of you before too long, and then you can leave. She went pale, partly from outrage, and partly because her wrist was beginning to throb. It must have got sprained when he had dragged her into the room. I mustn't whimper. I can't look weak. I just have to keep him talking for long enough for Mr. Williams to notice I'm gone and come looking, she thought. Hey, you might even get something out of the arrangement, Javier said. He came to sit beside her and forced her back to the couch. He rested one large palm flat on her swelling abdomen and murmured, If your child was gone, would the rights be grateful to me? I've got enough money to arrange an abortion, even if you are a bit too far along for it to be entirely legal. He lounged on the cushions, his upper body angled toward her. Kate told me that Jason wants to marry you. But how can you possibly get hitched while you're carrying another man's child? I can help you. A mutually beneficial arrangement. His hand pressed down harder on her abdomen, scaring her more than any of his threats so far. Maybe I should give Jason Wright a call first. What do you think he'd have to say? I'll give it to you, she exclaimed desperately. The Griffin, you can have it as long as you don't hurt my child. He laughed heartily. 
His hand on her belly gentled and stroked over her baby bump softly. Just like I thought. A selfish person like you doesn't care about what happens to Kate after this. You only care about yourself. Madison glared at him affronted. I've always done all the right things. Turned the other cheek and taken the high road and all that. Why do people expect me to be some kind of saint? I'm a good person, but it's never enough. I'm supposed to repay the people who hurt me with understanding and forgiveness. Well, that's not always possible. I'm only human, she fumed internally. Kate's been a thorn in my side since the day I met her. All through college, she tried to undermine me. Then, when she became a Greenwald, she mocked and ridiculed me any chance she got. Why should I care about her? There's no reason at all for me to help her. And yet, I still tried to stop her from making a mistake with Javier. And look where that kind of impulse has got me. I was a fool to get involved at all, and I'm not going to be foolish enough to try and help her again now, she thought. Javier regarded Madison with disdain, feeling superior. He took her phone out of her pocket and scrolled through her contacts list. Flicking past Ian's number, he landed on Jason's. Shall we give him a ring now, he asked as he waved the phone in her face. She swallowed, her eyes flicking to the door behind him. I think he'd be willing to give me a million dollars to ensure your inconvenient pregnancy goes away, don't you? He continued with a nasty grin. After all, I heard he loves you. Jason won't be willing to do that, she snapped, monitoring his reaction closely. His family is dead set against him marrying a divorcee. Just give up. He snorted in disbelief and lifted the phone to his ear. Madison shoved him with all her might, and he crashed into the glass-topped coffee table, which shattered under his weight, sending him to the floor amidst the broken glass. She rushed to the door, wrenched it open, and ran into the hallway. It took Javier only a moment to recover and come after her, drawing the knife from his belt. Trying to suppress her fear, Madison ran for her life. There was no one in the corridor leading to the washrooms, so she ran toward the lobby. Taking a deep breath around the growing stitch in her side, she yelled, Help! at the top of her lungs. Her shout echoed through the halls and into the dining room. Staff and guests froze at the anguished cry. Someone was in distress, and who was going to protect them? Madison knew, by the creeping sensation between her shoulder blades, that Javier was gaining on her. She tried to run faster, but fear had sapped her reserves, and she could feel herself slowing down. Surely someone must be coming to help me, she thought. Hands grabbed her shoulders from the front and swung her around. Someone had interposed themselves between her and her pursuer. Startled, she looked up into Jason's face. His arms closed around her, clutching her protectively. There was a wet-sounding impact, and she felt a shudder run through him. Madison! Daniel called from the end of the hall, rushing toward her. At the same time, Jason's assistant called out his name in alarm and hurried over. Both of them looked panicky. But it's okay now, they don't need to worry, Madison thought. Damn it! Javier yelled. Through the gap under Jason's arm she saw a flash of his knife. It was red. He raised it to the level of her stomach, and she jerked in terror. But Jason turned so that he was once again between her and Javier. Javier shot her one last venomous glance before turning on his heel and escaping along the corridor. Apprehend that man, Mr. Williams shouted, and the Griffin security guards chased after him. Are you okay? Daniel asked her, patting her down anxiously. She shook her head, dazed. Taking a step away from Jason, she saw that the side of her dress was soaked in blood. But it doesn't hurt, she thought in confusion. Jason swayed on his feet, and his assistant caught him before he fell. Madison pressed both hands to her mouth. The blood was Jason's. It was still pulsing out of the deep stab wound in his side. We have to get him home immediately, Jason's assistant said. How is he being so stoic? You'd think he was a Navy SEAL or something, bearing the pain without a sound, he thought. 
Daniel moved to Jason's other side to help support him. The assistant got out his phone to call the Wright family doctor. But Jason took the phone from him and barked at the doctor. Go to Madison's home to give her and the baby a checkup. Nothing must happen to hurt them. Madison gave a single broken sob. There were so many conflicting emotions fighting for space inside her. John and Stella, having just arrived and seen their daughter covered in blood, came hurrying up to her. What happened? Who did this? Madison just shook her head, unable to speak. Her eyes were fixed on Jason. He smiled at her. I think I'll have to go now, Madison. His eyes rolled back in his head, and he sagged into Daniel's arms as he passed out. Daniel and the assistant wrestled his limp body into their arms and carried him to Daniel's car. Madison watched them go. He was so brave, and he's been hurt because of me. Why did I have to be the woman he fell in love with? She thought. Daniel drove Jason back to his family home since they had a fully equipped medical facility there, and it would be quicker than going to a hospital. He left Jason in the capable care of several expert surgeons, who seemed confident that he would recover from his injury. That's a relief. If Jason died now, we'd be in hot water, having nothing to bargain with for Ian's medical care. We should have thought to develop our medical center as the Wrights did. Then we wouldn't be in this position now, he thought. Sighing, he went back to the car, which was Ian's. He took the long route back to the Weston house, needing the drive to clear his head. Olivia saw the car coming up the drive and hurried to open the front door. When Daniel got out, she huffed. Why are you driving Ian's car? You keep making me think that he's come home. He hugged her. Ugh, do you miss him? Olivia glared at him and changed the subject as they went inside. I heard you went to have lunch with Jason. What were you talking about? We didn't get a chance to talk about anything. Daniel replied grimly. He had an, uh, accident. We've had to postpone lunch. He flopped onto the couch. The day already felt like it had gone on for too long, and he still had to have a difficult conversation with his mother. Bracing himself, he asked, Mom, what do you want to happen with Madison's baby? Olivia went completely still for a moment, and then she sagged and sat down beside him. Daniel waited patiently for her to answer. Eventually, she said, I know you think I've been excessively cruel to her. I think my children have been ahead of me in coming to terms with all of this. One thing I do know is that I don't want a repeat of what happened with the Greenwalds, so I won't do anything to try and get her to lose a child. Daniel's heart lifted but then sank again as she stood up and looked down at him like some avenging goddess. But my son's life always comes first. I'll pay any price to protect Ian. She left Daniel on the couch, his scalp tingling with apprehension. Her meaning's clear. She won't get her own hands dirty, but if the rights try anything, she won't stop them. Damn this. I'm still the only one who's really on Ian's side, he thought. Stella helped Madison out of the Griffin and into Francis's car. Then she turned fearful eyes to her husband. He shook his head, letting her know that Javier still hadn't been apprehended. His fear growing, John tried to call Kate, but it went to voicemail. Once they were all in the car, Francis got Madison settled comfortably and asked if she was all right. My heart's still thumping from when Mr. Williams called me with this news. With Ian still in treatment, if anything happened to Madison now, we'd be finished, he thought. The hotel staff and the police are all looking for Javier, he told her. But he hasn't turned up yet, I'm afraid. I'm fine, she replied with a sigh. I'm not going to live in fear because he's on the loose. He hurt Jason, so he's not going to get away with that. The police will catch him soon enough. Tell Mr. Williams that he doesn't need to have his staff running around after him. I will, Francis agreed, and drove off toward the Greenwald house. Madison was silent throughout the journey, staring out of the window without seeing a thing. The scene of Jason leaping to her defense and his subsequent stabbing kept replaying in her head. There are some people I'm simply destined to let down, she thought. They reached the house, and Zack came running out to meet the car. He had been frantic with worry since John called to tell him the news. The doctors sent by Jason were already there, 
waiting to hustle Madison indoors and examine her. Zach only relaxed when he saw that she was fine. Who the hell is Javier Gomez anyway? He demanded of Francis. John and Stella also listened attentively as Francis replied. We've run some checks. His family origins came from Mexico, but he's the only one who settled in this country. He seems to support himself mainly by sponging off Kate. We think it is likely he has a drug habit too. Don't worry, we'll be paying much closer attention in the future. Zack grunted. Thanks. You needn't stay. Francis and his people left. Zack watched them go with folded arms. What a joke. Ian's divorced Madison. So why is Francis still hanging around? Is she under surveillance? He thought. Francis, knowing his position was precarious, left without saying a word. As soon as the doctors had examined her and proclaimed both she and the child fit and healthy, Madison went to her room and changed out of her blood-stained clothes. She couldn't sit still, even though she was exhausted. I have to see Ian. I miss him, she thought. Fortunately, no one was in to try and talk her out of leaving. She called a cab and was gone as soon as possible, urging the driver to go faster. For the first time, she thought of the villa as home and wanted to return there. When they arrived, she paid as quickly as she could and then hurried inside the door that would take her to Ian. Then she stopped with her hand on the door. After all the rush to get there, she was suddenly hesitant. It's only four o'clock. Can I turn up now when it's not our agreed-upon time? I've got no way to contact him to ask, and no way of knowing if there are other people in the room. What if I bump into someone I shouldn't, and it makes everything worse? Madison thought. Her mind was churning so much that she couldn't make a decision. Finally, she let her hand fall and huddled on the steps outside the door, hugging her knees to her chest. I just have to wait for the time we agreed. It's not that long. As she sat there waiting, her mind replayed the scenes from all the years that she had known Jason. She could remember all the different ways he had appeared, from a sweaty youth on the basketball court up to the suave businessman he was now. I remember how he protected and trusted me. He's been there for me when I've needed him over and over again. And all I've ever done is disappoint him. The things he's done for me would be enough to melt anyone's heart. Except mine. Mine was already taken. Love is like that. Unreasonable and without rules. The only thing Jason ever did wrong was to not be Ian, she thought. She was so lost in her thoughts that she jumped as the door behind her opened. Ian's surprise showed on his face when he found her sitting there waiting for him. Her heart filled up, and she felt normal for the first time since the argument with Javier. Ian sat in his wheelchair and smiled down at her. Come here. Such simple words, but they were everything she needed. This is my love. My choice, she thought as she threw herself into his arms. All the years seemed to drop away, and she was once again that young woman falling in love feeling like the whole world was spread at her feet. Ian drew Madison in tight and buried his face in her hair. His smile was so bright it would melt the winter snow. Settling her slight form onto his lap, he turned his chair and wheeled them both into his room. Come and eat something with me. I've had no appetite the last few days, so maybe you'll help me feel like eating again. Ian requested. Pleasant aromas filled the room as Ian uncovered the dishes on the coffee table. Madison sat on the carpet and began to pile food onto a plate. Sniffing appreciatively, she realized how hungry she was. Ian looked down at her fondly from where he had parked his chair beside her. With a teasing smile, he asked, Is this how it's going to be now I'm disabled? You ignore me completely and just stuff your face? She smiled up at him the swell of positive emotion after her terrible ordeal, bringing tears to her eyes. Grabbing his hand, she squeezed it hard as she told him, I knew you'd be here for me when I needed you. Moved by the trust in her eyes, he cleared his throat and leaned forward to pick up the fork. Since he was supposed to be alone there, there was only one set of tableware. He forked up a bite of food and held it out to Madison, who daintily ate it off his fork and hummed in appreciation. After relinquishing the fork to her, he moved to the other side of the table and watched her enjoy the meal. 
With her there, he felt at peace. The room, always elegantly appointed, only seemed to be made beautiful in her presence. Feeling his gaze on her, Madison paused and raised her eyes to his. The tenderness between them was palpable. She cataloged his familiar features. Her love for him made them the most handsome features she had ever seen. He's my one and only, she thought. Her gaze couldn't help but drop to his powerless legs, and her appetite abruptly disappeared. She put down her plate and moved to sit by his feet, reaching out a hand to trace a path over his thigh. How are you now? she asked. I don't have to be a doctor to know that if you don't use your muscles for a long time, they atrophy. If Ian is forced to spend too long in a wheelchair, then even when he can walk again, he may not be able to, she thought. Ian put his hand over her. He knew what she was worried about. They were the same worries that plagued him. Bending down, he put his face close to hers. He could see himself reflected in her eyes. You're worried about me, so try not to give me more to worry about. I don't want to have to be concerned about you and the children as well. Madison looked up at him with wide, panicked eyes. Does he know something? None of it was my fault, but I don't want him to have any reason to worry about what I'm doing or thinking. After all, everyone knows that I'm the main reason for Ian's attacks of paranoia. He's liable to misinterpret anything these days, she thought. Ian wasn't angered by her silence. He gave a slight smile and caressed her cheek. Madison, I can't be by your side, so you have to learn how to protect yourself and the baby. You have to carry my love with you and know it's a protection against anything, he thought but didn't dare to say. Of course, I care about what happened between her and Jason. I care so much I want to rush over to his place and beat him senseless, but I don't want to bring all of those ugly thoughts into this bedroom. Let all the ugliness of the world stay far away from here. Although he held this space where he met Madison sacred, the same couldn't be said for the rest of the villa. When he had heard about the situation, he had smashed every breakable thing in the rest of the house, completely losing control of his emotions. Some of the medical staff had been injured by flying ornaments and crockery, and even Liana had hidden from him and waited until his rage had burned itself out. Still, no one dared to ask him about it. After his rage had subsided, all he had wanted was to see Madison again, to reassure himself that her heart still belonged to him, and hold her close for the rest of his life. It's miraculous, he thought, that as soon as I opened the door and saw her, all my anger and impulsive rage disappeared. She came to find me. That's the best answer I could have. No one can steal her heart from me. Madison wiggled closer to his feet and leaned her head in his lap. His long fingers combed smoothly through her hair as she replied, I promise I'll take care of myself and our kids, but that doesn't mean we don't still need you. We're all waiting for you to come back to us. Ian felt like his blood was surging so strongly through his veins that it must be audible, but he didn't have the words to express what he was feeling. I'll just have to show her, bit by bit, through every single one of my actions that I'm ready to stand by her side again. I'll use every breath in my body to ensure I can be with my family, he thought, smiling gently as he caressed her cheek. They both knew that they couldn't get away with spending a late night together, so they reluctantly parted. When Ian chased her out, he immediately missed her company, but there were some things they had no control over. Madison made her way back to the Greenwald. When she let herself in, the ground floor was brightly lit. Kate and John were having a showdown in the middle of the living room. I spitting fire, Kate shouted. Why are you being so biased? I'm your biological daughter and Madison's only adopted. So why are you taking her side over mine? You didn't see anything. You only have her word for it that Javier did anything. It's not like she was hurt, is it? She's fine, but you're still treating me like a criminal. What will you do if she dies? Lock me up? Madison tried to creep past unnoticed, but Zack saw her and caught her arm. Where have you been? His tone was concerned, but also accusatory. Madison made an excuse and turned her focus onto Kate. She couldn't help but feel a bit sorry for her. It's so obvious that Javier's bad news, but she's completely under his spell, she thought. Kate noticed her hovering in the doorway. 
Oh, look, your good daughter is back. She shot her a mocking smile. I heard that when she wanted to marry Ian, you were opposed to that, too, because Ian was hiding his identity. When you found out who he was, you changed your mind straight away. Did you feel like fools? She turned her mocking gaze on her parents. I know that's what everyone else thought of you. My parents are just blinded by their snobbery, she thought. Tell me, if I were to elope with Javier, what would you do? You shouldn't look down on people just because they're not as rich as you. Javier might not have much now, but that doesn't mean he won't have money in the future. Stop looking down your noses at people. Oh, did he threaten to force an abortion on me because he's got such a promising future? Madison snapped. She couldn't shake off the chill she had felt when Javier pressed his hand against her stomach. He's a grade A lowlife, she thought. Kate glanced at Madison's stomach. I think he had the right idea, and I bet Ian's parents agree. If you have the child, you won't be able to marry Jason, and you'll be a burden on everyone. If you get rid of it, then Jason's stupid enough to marry you, isn't he? Madison was speechless. Enjoying her reaction, Kate continued with a cruel grin. As Javier is so generously offering to help you make a good marriage, I think the least you can do is give him some compensation. Say, the griffin? It's not enough, considering what you'll be worth of once you marry Jason. But we'll make do. Shaking her head in disbelief, Madison huffed out a laugh. Seriously, Kate? Does nothing in the world matter to you except for Javier and money? Kate made a show of thinking about it for a second. Yep, that pretty much sums it up. What can I say? There's no point trying to reason with someone like her, Madison thought. Kate prowled closer to her, her eyes fixed on Madison's stomach. If I help you get rid of the baby, do you think the rights will reward me? Maybe even decide to ignore the little matter of Javier stabbing Jason, she said. Her face darkening, Madison took a step back just as Zack moved to protect her. John made a noise like a steam engine venting steam and slapped Kate across the face. If you touch Madison, I'll throw you out of the house. I don't need someone as heartless as you in my family. Kate gaped at him, her hand clasped to her reddened cheek. You hit me. You know how many years I suffered because of you and you hit me because of that imposter? She yelled.